So in this screencast, we're going to look at another example, example 12.2, of how to use fminsearch. So basically, we're going to use this built-in MATLAB function, fminsearch, to find the minima of the following two functions. This function here in part A, and this function of two variables here in part B. <clears throat> now note the function in part A, it takes in one variable, and it spits out a scalar, so a single value, f. And the function in part B takes in two variables, x and y, it has three different parameters, which are adjustable, x, a, y, a, and capital A. And it spits out a, another single scalar value, f. Okay, so how do we use fminsearch to do these things? Well, using fminsearch, at least in, as far as the syntax, is very similar to using either f0 or f solve. So first, you have to write a function that fminsearch will call upon. And second, you may have to call fminsearch itself in a certain way. So for part A, the thing to note is that your um, function f of x looks something like this, where you have, uh, it's sort of parabolic, or with an obvious minimum near x equals 0 0.6 and with a value of about 5.5 for the minimum. So the function itself is going to look this way, where you have um, a single input variable x, a scalar output variable f, and here's the way our function is defined. Now, if we're going to call fminsearch from, say, a script, call looks like this, so we get a, um, an initial guess, followed by a function handle, and then we have the call to fminsearch. Now, note, of course, that fminsearch does expect the um, function handle and initial guess as the two inputs, right? <clears throat> but in addition to that, so, okay, so if we run this, or excuse me, from the MATLAB side, the way this is gonna look is here's what our function looks like, and here's what our script looks like. So at the beginning of the script, closing all figures, and then we're just gonna, at first, make a plot like this, so that's not something that you need to know, at least explicitly for this example, but then to call fminsearch, it's gonna look something like this, where um, we have an initial guess, we have, we call fminsearch, and then I'm going to display the answers. So if I run this little cell here, it pops up the figure that I was showing you before. And in addition, on the MATLAB side, it tells me that the minimum of the function is 5.4, and it's located at 0 0.58 for x. Now, going back to the lecture notes, there are, I just want to point out there are other ways to call fminsearch. Um, in addition to having the two inputs f handle and x0, you can have an options variable here. Or if you want to pass extra parameters, you can do that just in the same way as we've done with f0 and f solve. So you put either the options um, variable in here or empty brackets if you don't want to do anything with the options, but the empty brackets have to serve at least as a placeholder. And then the third and um, after um, inputs to fminsearch are the parameters to your function. In addition to that, you can have fminsearch spit out where the um, minimum in your function is, but also what is the value of that minimum. So it can have two outputs. Okay, so for part B, we're going to call fminsearch, and we're going to make use of the fact that you can pass extra parameters to it by passing these three extra parameters, x, a, y, a, and capital A, all equaling 10 in this case. So the way that that function is going to look will be like this. Now note, um, I put this figure over here, which, is, which caused this um, line here to wrap onto the next line, at least in the lecture notes, but that's not, obviously not the way you would write it in MATLAB. But anyway, so here we have a function where its, its first input is some vector, capital Y, and then we have these three other inputs here. But its output is a single scalar value, f. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unpack our capital Y vector into x and little y, and then define what our function is, f. Now the function, the way it looks, it's going to look like this with all these different bumps in it, and it's going to be kind of parabolic in both directions, x and y, but you got these little bumps here. And so fminsearch will go ahead and try to find what is the value of the minimum and where is that minimum located in x and y. So um, on the script side, what we're going to do is we're going to define our three input parameters. We're going to define an initial guess, and then we're going to call fminsearch, referencing our function name, giving it our initial guess vector y0, uh, uh, empty brackets as a placeholder for the options parameter, and there are three extra parameters that get passed to our function in the order that you would see them in the function after the first input variable to the function. 
And so we're going to spit out what is the actual value of the uh, location of the minimum as well as what is the value of the minimum itself. So if we go back over to MATLAB, what does that look like? So this function looks like this, where we have, I mean, this is almost exactly what I just showed you in the lecture notes. And if we look at the script for part B, the first part is just making the surface plot itself, which I already showed you in the lecture notes. And then the second part is calling on fmin search. So we give it a um, value of initial guesses for, uh, it has to be a vector of two points. In addition to that up here, I've also already defined what my three input parameters, extra input parameters are, which jump down here. And then you call fmin search and display what is the value of the minimum and what are the x and y values of the location of the minimum. So if I run that portion of the script, what MATLAB will tell me, in addition to spitting out this figure here, what it will tell me is that the minimum of the function is this and a located x value of this and a y value of that.